Emil and Halua are twins, and Emil is the young of the two twins. It's never stated when they were born, but it should be between 2040 and 2016. The only thing we know about their parents is that they died in an accident. It was never stated what kind of accident or when the accident happened, but it was most likely around the year 2024. Before the accident occurred, they were living together with their parents in a house. They even had a cat and a greenhouse. This got mentioned in the novel The Stoneflower. But after the accident occurred, they were brought to a facility of the National Weapon Laboratory. Emil was living a carefree and happy life inside the facility. He often counted the clocks outside the windows or played randomly keys on the piano, while Halua was more concerned and distrusting towards the adults. They were unknowingly part of Project Snow White which had the purpose to make the perfect weapon against the Legion using muscle particles. In one of the experiments, Emil and Halua were turned into weapons. Halua was turned into a skeleton monster, which was the ultimate weapon armed with powerful magic, while Emil got the power of petrifying ice. The new name of Halua was number 6, while the new name given to Emil was number 7. Despite being turned into a monster, Halua kept her human heart, which caused her to go berserk in her inherent desire to keep Emil safe. But it didn't take long for Halua to find out that they turned Emil into a weapon as well. Emil was planned as a countermeasure if Halua went berserk because of his ability to petrify. Everything ended with Halua getting petrified and sealed away inside the facility. After this accident occurred, Further experiments regarding the enhancing of humans with muscle particles were stopped, and the laboratory lost most of its founding. Emil continued to live inside the facility, together with around 24 scientists. Somewhere between the year 2033 and 2043, Emil was kidnapped from the laboratory by Yura Masayoshi, which would later be known by the name Tyran. Yura was the commander of a small military unit for the countermeasure against Special Biological Organism Department. The one who provided Yura with money and supported his movements was Gestalt Kaini's grandmother named Kali. Later she ordered Yura to protect her mansion against the Legion attack. During the attack, Yura used Emil's abilities in order to save himself when the attack couldn't be stopped. But in the end, they were still able to defeat all Legions thanks to Emil and Kaini. This was also the first time where Gishalt Nier meets Gishalt Kaini and Emil. I'm going to make a full video about this attack on Gishalt Kaini and Yura in the future, so I'm not going too deep into this. It's unclear what happened to Emil after this, up until the year 3465. At some point, he went back to the laboratory, where he was living in the mansion above it, together with a butler named Sebastian. We don't know much about Sebastian only that he is unable to age, just like Emil can't age. He's also really committed to help Emil and is doing everything he can to help him. During the past 1000 years, Emil forgot about his past, or more likely repressed it. He started to hate his eyes and shut himself in. Sebastian was looking for a way to cure Emil's eyes. He found out that the documents on how to cure Emil's eyes is located inside the mansion but he wasn't able to obtain the documents because of shades. With the help of Replicant Nier and Replicant Kaini, they were able to obtain the documents, but the problems didn't end there. The documents were encrypted and they weren't able to read the documents. It took Sebastian 5 years to decrypt the documents. At the beginning of these 5 years, the village in which Nier was living together with his little sister Yona was attacked by shades. Thanks to the help of Kaini and Emil, they were able to defend the village, but it ended with Kaini getting petrified in order to steal away a powerful shade, as well as Yona getting abducted by Shadow Lord. When Sebastian was finally able to decrypt the documents, he found out that the cure for Emil's eyes can be found in the underground laboratory. Together with Nier, Emil went into the laboratory, which was full of shades at this point. While they were searching for the cure, Emil started to remember his past. At the end of the laboratory, they found the cure for Emil's eyes. 
The cure for his eyes was to steal sealed away Halwa. With her power, he would be able to control his eyes. Number 6 woke up from her deep slumber, and because during the petrifications, Halwa's heart vanished, only a monster was left. Number 6 swallowed Emil and attacked Nier, but in the end, Nier managed to defeat Number 6, and Emil managed to merge with Number 6, gaining a massive amount of magical power. Because he merged with number 6, he lost his human look and got his iconic skeleton-like look. Thanks to his new magical power, Emil was able to release Kaini from her petrification. With the help of Emil and Kaini, Nier went to save Fiona from the Shadow Lord. During the battle against Devola on Popola, Emil had to sacrifice himself in order to save Nier and Kaini from an explosion. However, if you get ending B in Nier Replicant or Nier Gestalt, you see that Emil actually survives the blast. Emil's head lands in the desert and he makes his way to fight Nier and Kaini. It's unclear if Emil survived in all four ending timelines of the game. He definitely survived, like I said, in ending B, but also in ending D. We know for sure that he survived in ending D because of the novel The Lost World, where he appeared to help Kaini. The novel Around the World in 80 Days tells the struggle that Emil had, and he was nothing but a head. This novel is definitely connected with ending B, but it's unclear if the novel also happened in the ending D timeline. When we follow the timeline of ending E, we eventually reach Nier Automata, but what happened between ending D and Nier Automata? You would guess a lot because it's the time span of more than 7000 years. But sadly no, or more like we don't know much what happened between this time period. The aliens started to invade the Earth in the year 5012. Around this time the track The Space Rock, which can be found on disc 2 of the Near Replicant Drama CD takes place. It tells the story of the first encounter between Emil and the aliens. This is also the first time where Emil creates clones of himself. After 100 years, Emil created more than 85 million copies of himself. It is later revealed that the more Emil copies existed, the more Emil's memories became fragmented. This is the only thing we know up until the beginning of the Near Automata. The first time 2B and 9S encountered Emil was inside the shopping mall, while they were fighting against a bunch of machine life forms. The next time 2B and 9S encountered Emil, his head was attached to a sales card, and he started to sell items to Yorha androids. When 2B and Nanes discovered a Lunatio, Emil approaches them. He mentioned that the sight of the flower gives him a surge of unfamiliar memories and a strange feeling. He requested them to let him know if they find any more flowers. After discovering the second flower, Emil recounts the time where he really cared for Lunatius. But at some point, the sand expanded and the flower started to wilt. At the same time, he stopped seeing people. Finding the third flower, Emil remembers the time when the aliens started invading the world, how he fought against them, how he wanted to protect something really precious to him. But he can't remember what it is. When he found the fourth flower, Emil mentioned that he needed to copy himself in order to fight against the aliens but also that he lost a lot of copies during the war. After they found the fifth and last flower, Emil thanks to be in the nest, for making him remember an important and very special place to him. He also gave them the key to visit this place, which was under their shopping mall. When they visited the place, they discovered that the special place to Emil is Kaini's shack, surrounded by Lunatius. He explained to them that the original Emil spent a lot of time in this place, with people he loved, that he had tough times, sad times, but these memories were his greatest treasure. After this, Emil went into the desert, where multiple Emil clones were laying around in the sand. Between those Emil clones, the player can find the sales card Emil, laying on the side. When the player interacts with Emil, he gets suddenly attacked by several Emil clones. Cloned and sent into battle again and again, Emil knows all too well the pain and suffer from a war without end. Because no clone is a perfect duplicate of the original Emil, 
Some Amicons eventually snapped and ran wild. During the fight, the player can hear the original emu talk to them and trying to stop them. At the end of the fight, a self-destruct sequence will initiate, leaving the player with two choices. If you allow Emil to self-destruct himself, he will overload his fusion reactors, destroying the whole planet. With this decision, ending Y gets unlocked. However, if the player chooses to stop the self-destruction by destroying the Emil clones, the quest Emil's Determination gets completed. After destroying the Emil clones, the sales card Emil started to remember something important that he was running from the memories of losing those who were close to him. In his final moments, he saw Kaini near. He was glad to be able to see them all again. But this is not the end for Emil, because there are still a lot of Emil clones out there. We know for sure that up until the year 12,423 Emil existed, thanks to the weapon story of the weapon Emil's head. It's unclear what happened to Emil after this year, but because he cloned himself indefinitely, it's pretty unlikely that Emil will ever stop existing.